Hello and welcome to this tutorial video for the Matter Shots contest. We would like to thank you for participating and hope you have fun. Here you can see a Matter Shot I found to use as reference and inspiration. We don't want you to just recreate the Matter Shot image. For the contest, you should use the image as inspiration and add your own flair. Also note that the judges will be looking at the creativity you use to construct your substance graph. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a substance as well as an MDL where the substance is used as an input to drive layers in the shader of the MDL. The MDL is used to create layers such as clear coating and translucency. You don't have to use MDL. You can create only a real-time substance or you can choose to use MDL only if you like. The choice is completely up to you. This tutorial is not geared for users who are very new to Designer. I'll be creating the material node by node, but we will be moving fairly quickly. If you are a new user, we would love to have you participate in the contest, but it may be more beneficial to first check our Substance Designer Getting Started series on Substance Academy. So now let's dive in and start the tutorial. Now I'm going to create a new substance graph. I'm going to continue working off this package. So if you're starting from scratch, you're just going to create a new substance. In my case, I'm going to right click the package and choose File, New, Substance Graph. For the template, I'm going to choose empty, and here for the graph name, we'll just call this tiles underscore tutorial. And I want to make sure that my size mode is relative to parent, and then I'll click OK to create this blank graph. So the first thing that I do is I work off a base material. So I'm going to create a base material, and then here I'm going to come over to the material preset and change this to dielectric, and then just start with a fairly rough value. Then I'll right click this node and drag and drop that here into uh, my 3D view. And in this case, I'm going to start with this Tacomo Studios, what I'm using under the environment map. So you can change your environment map, just left click, drag and drop that into the 3D view. Also here for my parent size for the graph, I'm going to set this to a working resolution of 2K. All right, so you'll notice, like I said, we created an empty graph. There's no outputs. I always work off this base material. And I view this base material or the result of this base material here in my 3D view. And the last thing I do at the end of the process after I've done any material layering is then I just create the final outputs. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is start to create our tile shape. And I'm going to use the tile sampler to do that. So I'll start to type in tile and we'll use tile sampler. So here's the tile sampler. Let's change the X amount to 2 and the Y amount to 8. And then I'm going to scroll down to where I have this offset parameter, and I'm going to set this to 0.5. So we start to get this pattern that I want. Uh, I need to go and start to uh, change my scale. So let's set this to a value of 0.9. And then here on the X, I'm going to set this to 1.09. And on the Y, we'll set it to 1.02. So if I zoom in, you can see that uh, this is now the pattern that we have. So let's start to kind of visualize this here in our 3D view. And this is where the base material comes into play. So first, I need a normal. So I'll hit the space bar here on the operational nodes. We'll create a normal. Let's take the output, plug that into the normal map. And I'm going to set this to a value of 12. So this is our normal. It's kind of hard to tell what's happening here. Uh, that's OK. Uh, we'll come over to our base material. Let's scroll down. And underneath the user-defined maps, we're going to enable our normal. So let's hook this up, and then here in my 3D view, uh, you can start to see the, uh, the foundation here of this pattern. Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to do with this pattern here is you'll notice that the corners are, are very sharp. And so what I'd like to do is just create uh, a tile that has these rounded edges here. And so to do that, we're going to start with a blur. So here I'll uh, choose this blur high quality grayscale. We'll plug this in, and I'll start to maybe lower my intensity to start, so maybe something like this. Let's move these guys out of the way. All right, and then we are going to create a levels, and right after the blur, we're going to hook in our levels, and then we're going to make some adjustments here to the input black and white. So if we zoom in a little close, you can see we now have these nice kind of little rounded edges like this. Uh, and this is the effect that I want to create. So now uh, we'll take the output of this levels and plug it here into our normal. And we start to see uh, a bit more of a beveled result here to our normal map. Uh, as I zoom in really close, you can see that that blur uh, gave us a little bit of, an, of a bevel. The next thing I want to do is I want to start to kind of uh, produce the effect of, of kind of like more of this kind of rounded uh, shape to these tiles. So to do that, we're going to use our uh, blend or our blur here again. 
And I'm going to experiment here and see if I can just use this together. So uh, first, let's do a blend. And uh, let's take this, uh, this blur and we'll place it here into the foreground. And then we're going to take our levels and place that into the background. Uh, and then we're going to choose Multiply. And so right off the bat, you can see this gives me a little bit of this rounded edge. So now let's plug that into our normal. And so now we get a, a, a more pronounced kind of bevel that you can see here to our tiles. All right, so next I'm going to add a little bit more detail here to this normal. Uh, so we're going to start uh, by uh, adding a dirt. Uh, so I'm going to add a dirt 3 node. And then I'm also going to add a dirt 1. Uh, actually, let me change that. Instead of dirt 1, let's do a dirt 2. So we'll come in and we'll add this dirt 2 here. So this is kind of the pattern that we get. Um, OK, so let's run a levels. And so we'll come into here, we'll run a levels, and we're just going to tweak some of these values because uh, I just want to uh, you know, get just a few of these kind of uh, spots here. I don't want a, a, a huge, a whole lot of them. So you can see that uh, by processing this here through the levels, we kind of minimize how many of these white dots that we're getting here, uh, these little speckled shapes. So we'll do something like this. Now, I'd like to kind of thicken these up a little bit. So I am going to uh, use another blur after this. So we'll run a blur here. Makes it really hard to see what's happening. So here, let's drop our intensity value. If I zoom in pretty close, you can see here we have those dots. And then I'm going to do another levels right after that and take my input white and just move this uh, like you see here. So just a few adjustments. And now you see that we've, we get some kind of random kind of large kind of spots like, like this. OK, so that's going to be one piece here. Uh, the next is going to be, uh, we're going to use this Dirt 3. So let's run a levels on this guy. And again, just going to uh, make some adjustments here just to kind of minimize uh, you know, uh, several of these kind of patterns. So we're going to try to get something more kind of like this here. OK, so we've got two variations now. And then we're just going to blend these two guys together. So we'll do a blend. And we'll just put, it uh, doesn't matter which one, we'll do one in the foreground, one in the background, and we're going to set the blending mode here to lighten. And now I can then, of course, go back and start to make changes uh, to this as well. So uh, here, let's uh, just kind of minimize again some of these spots. So here you can see we're getting some smaller uh, spots, little speckles and some larger ones because of that blur shape. And here, let me just increase that value a bit. There we go, something like that. So this is, uh, this is the extra normal detail that I want to add. So this is the height map part of it. And now we need to uh, create some normal information. Um, I could just take this map here and blend it down with the pattern that I have and then feed that through a single normal. But I'd like to be able to control uh, the normal intensity for the tile pattern versus uh, this, this noise pattern. So to do that, I'm just going to create uh, a separate normal and I'm going to plug uh, this kind of noise map into here and uh, let's just try it with a value of one to start. So now I have two normal maps and I can combine these two guys together using the normal combine. So spacebar, uh, normal, I start to type the, something with normal at filters and we're going to use this normal combine. So we'll just put one in normal two and we'll put the pattern in normal, um, the normal one input and then we'll plug this here to our base. Material. Now you'll notice here, oh, I can't make this connection for some reason. And if this ever happens to you when you're working in the graph, it's going to uh, be caused by the mode that you're in. So I'm in compact material mode. And within that, designers trying to make connections for specific channels to create a material. And here it doesn't really know what to do with this. Uh, the normal is not, it, for some reason, it's not connecting correctly. So what I can do is just hit one key to kind of take me here to standard mode, and then I can simply make that connection. And then if I want to, I can hit three on the keyboard to collapse everything. So now if we look back here in our 3D view, we can start to see the effect of, of some of these normals in here. So with this, I'm going to go back over here to my tile sampler. And I think I'm going to just scroll down to my size and maybe change this to a value of maybe 0.86 see what that does for me. OK, so that gives me too much uh, of, a, of a gap within here. So I don't want that. I'm um, just playing around with this. Let's try a 0.89. OK, so I wanted to have just a little bit more of a gap than, than what was being produced. So I just changed the size on that tile sampler. Also, here in this kind of where this grout is going to go, you can see that some of these uh, spots are starting to show up in here. And if I don't want that, uh, we, we need to kind of subtract that out of the mass that we're creating so far. 
So let's just go ahead and do that while we're here. And so to do that, we are going to use a blend. So we're going to have our blend. And uh, let's see, I'm going to take the result here of this levels. I'm going to use an invert grayscale because we want to invert this value. And I'll plug this here into the foreground. And then I'm going to take the result here of kind of my little uh, dot speckled noise map here and place that into the background. And then here I'll just do a subtract. All right, so now we're going to take the result of this and plug it into our normal. And you'll notice here in this kind of grout area, uh, those that extra kind of speckling type dot effect here is, is removed from the grout just as I need it to be. So the next thing that we're going to work on is going to be our color. So uh, at this stage here, this is going to represent uh, our height map. So with these uh, nodes selected here, I'm just going to frame this up. And here in the frame, I'm just going to type in height. So we get an idea of what we've been working on here uh, so far. OK, so here's where we kind of start this kind of map extraction phase. So you can see I took my height information, and, and I'm using that to extrapolate normal data. Uh, and then we've combined uh, these two uh, different normal maps here into a single normal. And then that, again, is feeding over to my base material. Again, like I said, just kind of my process of working. We do height, grayscale, map extraction, color, uh, and then everything pipes down into this single base material, which we'll then use to layer in another material, which in our case is going to be this grout material. At this stage, I'm not really worried so much about my roughness. I just have this kind of uniform roughness value, uh, and that's going to work for me at this time here. So we're just going to kind of keep things the way they are. All right, so let's do the color. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this fractal sum base here. And so this is kind of the noise pattern that it gives me. Uh, we could make some adjustments here to things like our global opacity and so on. But uh, instead of changing these things, what I'm going to do is just run a levels here. And I'm um, just kind of process the value range. So what I'm going to do is just kind of lift uh, the output black a bit. Uh, so I want to get something kind of maybe more close to this. So kind of a light, light color here, uh, or a light tonal range, I'll say. So we get something like this. Now, the next thing I want to do, based on what we have here for our reference image, is I want to go back and use something like this dirt here to have some kind of white kind of specks uh, on the tiles. So here, I'm going to uh, run another levels. Now, instead of just creating another instance of this node, I can borrow from what I already have. Uh, that's just going to be a more optimized way to work, because instead of duplicating nodes, I'm reusing what we have. Again, that's kind of the power of using this uh, node-based, non-destructive, or excuse me, non-linear uh, interface that we have. So we're going to take uh, this noise. And again, we're just going to run a levels on it. Uh, so just because we want to get something more like this here, a couple of these kind of little speckled shapes like this. So just kind of playing around with these values. Let me see what I can come up with. Try something like this. And then we're just going to blend these two guys together. So we'll do, uh, we'll put these two guys together. And then here for the blending mode, I'm going to set this to add. So now we kind of have this background. And then here we have these little white speckled shapes in here based on that uh, noise pattern that we had. So if I want to, you know, kind of more cleanly visualize my connection lines here, I'm going to hold down the Shift and Alt key. And then I'm going to use my left mouse button to drag this little yellow dot, uh, which is just going to help me just redistribute my connection line, just so it visually kind of reads a little bit easier. I can see that this noise is definitely rerouting over here to this levels. All right, because this is where we're kind of starting in on our color. All right, so now I want to start to kind of integrate this down to the bricks. Uh, one thing I want to kind of show you, if I were to just take a blend here, and uh, let's do, let's just take what we have here just to start as an example. And I'm going to plug this into the foreground. And we're going to take what we have here for our color, even though we're working grayscale right now, into the background. And I'm just going to multiply this. So what we get in this particular case is precisely what we've done here. We've taken our shape pattern and we've just multiplied or just placed it right over top of our pattern below. In this particular case, because of the pattern that I'm working with is so noisy, uh, it really doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't look like we just simply overlaid a pattern. Um, but typically, one of the things that I'll do in order to uh, combat like an issue like this is uh, I'll use a directional warp. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So we're going to use a directional warp. And we're going to plug this here into the input. And we're going to use this directional warp to offset our, our pattern here based on the values here that we have in our bricks. 
Now the problem here with this is that, well, we just have pure white. We don't have any luminance ranges here to this. So we have a new node in Substance Designer 2017.2 that's going to allow us uh, to create this pattern that we need. Uh, and so it's called the flood fill. So we're going to start by just creating uh, a flood fill node. And we need a mask to work with. And well, we have one already. So we're going to take the result of this blend and plug it here into the flood fill. Now, this flood fill node just gives us data that we can use with other flood fill nodes. So for example, if I hit the space bar again, start to type in flood, you can see that here are the options. We have this uh, other node here called flood fill to random color. And we're going to use this guy. So now if I plug this in, you can see here, if I uh, come over to my 2D view and I just disable the transparency, uh, we were uh, able, using these two nodes, to take our pattern here, which has no variation. It's basically very binary, uh, minus just a little bit of uh, transitional value here uh, in those gray areas to create kind of the rounded edges. Takes that, we'll say again, black and white kind of binary data, and it allows us to uh, change that into this randomized colored image. Uh, which can be used for all kinds of purposes. In our case, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this into a randomized luminance range that we can drive our directional warp as an intensity input. So here we need an intensity input. And this all makes sense when we actually put everything together. So one of the things I can do, since this is color information, I'm going to start to do a search for RG. It's going to filter my RGB nodes. And I'm going to use this RGBA split node. So it takes color as input, and what it's going to do is break this color image into individual channels. So notice right here, if I look at the red channel, this is the luminance variation I get. This is going to be perfect for driving that directional warp. But I can get a variation of that if I look at the green channel uh, or the blue channel. So we could use this to get different variations. Again, this is very handy uh, in all kinds of different scenarios. In our case, I'm just going to take, uh, let's see here, maybe just the red channel, and we're going to plug this right into this intensity input. So now if I double click this guy, if I come into my intensity input and I set this to something like, say, uh, a real high value, like say 45, you can see that it starts to offset things. Well, it's kind of hard to tell. So uh, in order to really visualize this, let's plug this here into this blend that we have. Uh, whoops, sorry, plugged it into the wrong. I need that to go into the background. All right, so now we can use this to kind of visualize what's happening with our tiles. So if we come back to that directional warp, as I start to increase this intensity, you'll notice that I'm able to shift uh, areas of that noise map based on the intensity values that we created with that flood filled node. So notice like values of white are going to offset or are going to be warped directionally by this node a lot more than areas that are really dark like say this, this uh, brick. So again, if I go back, my directional warp as I start to move, you can see this area here is moving or offsetting much more than say this node here. And this just lets me vary this pattern. This helps me to create a more kind of realistic kind of, uh, well, organic or varied result. And so that's what we want to do here with this uh, directional warp. Okay, so I no longer need this blend node. It was just there to illustrate what was happening here with this flood fill and why I was using this directional warp. Um, okay, so now we have grayscale. Like I said, we, we really want to be working on color. So we need to convert this grayscale to color. And we can do that by just using the gradient map. So uh, here's our gradient map. And we will just plug this guy in. And now this gray information is essentially color. So if we like, we could just plug this uh, directly here into uh, our base material, which we'll do in a moment. However, we'd like to kind of colorize these grayscale values, and we can do that here on the gradient. So for example, if I pick my gradient editor, I set a key, and I set this to something like, say, a red, you can see that we're starting to colorize this. Uh, and then this gives us a way to change this color any way we want. However, we'd like to create uh, like a, a user-driven value that allows us to change the color after the fact. So what I'm going to do uh, here, let's go back to our gradient editor. And uh, here, let's just clear all of these because uh, we just want to convert that to color. And then we're going to create an actual uniform color node. And let's come in and choose a color value. So I'm going to try something like maybe in this kind of blue, just slight, you know, this real light blue. And then we're going to blend this blue color over our gray value, and then we're going to set the blending mode here to multiply, and then that is going to colorize our map for us. So now we've got this color value, and I can just go through and start to just change the color to get different variations here. 
So like I said, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we set this to like a slight tinted color. So I'm going to do something like, uh, you know, something closer to like, say this. So it's, it's close to white, but you can see it's uh, just slight tint. Uh, also, I may go back here to this levels and just play around with this again because I feel like it was still a little too dark and some of this uh, area here was just a little too dark as well. Okay, so now we've got this value here. Uh, we could come over to this uniform color and for the output, uh, I could choose to go ahead and expose this as a value. So for the input name, I'll select new and I always give this like a, um, a specific name. I don't just let designer name it for me. Uh, so we're just gonna call this, uh, well, I'm just gonna call it color and we'll click okay. Double click to get ourselves to the root level of the graph and here we'll, label the, uh, we'll set a label of just color. And it's got that default value that we've already chosen. Okay, so now we can come back to our base material. And if I scroll down to our base color, I'm going to enable this to true. And now you see we got this base color uh, input here. So let's go ahead and connect our color. And now we've kind of colorized our tiles here, or the start of it. So uh, just kind of looking at what we have, this is where we're starting to introduce our color here. So let's just uh, bring these nodes back like this. Uh, here, let's do this. I like to just kind of make sure everything's just visually clean and easy to read. Um, okay, so another thing I'd like to do here, uh, just to take a step back, is we have kind of uh, a little bit of this kind of uh, noise variation, and then we have these white kind of speckled dots. Uh, I'd like to add uh, some black speckled dots into this as well. So if I come back over to kind of my height area, I already kind of have this here with this levels. Uh, let's look. Yeah, maybe this guy. Let's just use this again. So what I'm going to do here um, is just create a blend. And let's take the result of this level and pl place it here into the foreground. And let's take the result of this blend into the background. And then we're going to switch our blending mode here to subtract. So now we've kind of have these little dark spots as well. And then I can adjust or, you know, kind of feather those guys back uh, by just dropping the opacity. So it just adds a little bit of extra variation into that as well. All right, so uh, we have that. Let's hold down the Shift-Alt key. Let's grab this little connection line because, again, I just want to uh, just change kind of the way this connection line is running just so it kind of visually makes a little bit more sense. And now what I want to do is take the result of this blend and plug that into my directional warp input. So here you can see that it's just warped or offset everything. And going back, we start to get some of these little dark values in here. And if I want, I can, you know, now that I can see it on the model, I'll, I might uh, take my opacity. Let's just leave it at a nice 0.5 here. All right, so a little bit of variation with that and we're good to go here. Another thing that I'd like to do with this color map uh, just to add a little bit more dimensionality to this is uh, here on the edges if I zoom in really close because of that directional warp we can start to see uh, kind of the silhouette of what these tile shapes and right now what I'd like to do is be able to kind of put more of a, um, a brighter uh, kind of white edge around this. Okay, so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is come back over here to uh, let's just use uh, this guy here, uh, this mask. And I'm going to add a blend here. So we'll plug this guy into, whoop, I'm sorry, not a blend. What I want to do is a blur. So we're going to do a high quality blur here. We'll plug this guy in and let's just move this up here towards the top where we're going to be working. And uh, let's see, yeah, we're going to end up placing this way over here. So what I'm going to do is just uh, while, I'm, while I'm at it, just kind of reroute my connection line just so it's not so messy right through all my nodes here. So now I've got this blur and I can adjust uh, kind of my intensity value. Uh, then what I'm going to do is create a blend and I'm going to grab uh, this map again and we're going to place this here into uh, the, this is going to be in the background. We're going to take our blur and place that into the foreground and then we are going to do a subtract. So what this does is give me kind of like an edge mat, but it's kind of on the inside of the edge mat. And you'll notice that I can now come back here to my blur and I can increase the intensity uh, to kind of make this, you know, wider or, you know, more sharp around the edges. So I'm going to set that to a value, you know, maybe something more like this. And uh, once again, I think I'm going to just, you know, redistribute my connection line here just to try to keep things nice and clean. 
And then we're going to use uh, another blend up oh, actually before I do this, because I've been working grayscale so far, if I were to create a blend, you'll notice that I can't really blend a gray and a color image together. So what I need to do here is I need to add a gradient map to convert that grayscale to color, just as we did earlier. And, and then I can just plug that into the foreground and uh, take the result of what we had before. So our color map we've been working on, we'll place that in the background. Uh, then for the blending mode, we're just going to set it to add. And so now you can see that we get this kind of white edge around here. And if I want, I can come back over to this gradient map here. And in the gradient editor, I'll just create a key. And if I select that white key, I can now uh, just pull this guy down here to either change that value or even better, I can just come back over here to the blend itself and just lower the opacity, which again gives me kind of a control for intensity for uh, kind of that edge. So I'm going to maybe leave it at like maybe 0.88 or so. Okay, so now we have that in place. Let's plug this here into our base color. And now we kind of have this white edge around uh, our tile. All right, so now uh, we have, like I said, we have we worked on our height to help us create our patterns. Uh, from that, we extrapolate our normal. We ex we uh, were able to build our color uh, based on some of this height information. Uh, now I'm going to uh, add my roughness. Uh, typically, I will always do uh, color last. Here you can see me doing roughness last. But in the case of what I want to do uh, with this particular tile pattern and how I'm going to be using uh, an actual MDL to create like a clear coat for some of these bricks, uh, I just ended up doing roughness last in this case. So um, right now, uh, as far as roughness goes on our base material, uh, we're just using this uniform value. Uh, but what I'm going to do uh, is just come back to where, uh, let's see, let's just borrow one of these uh, maps that I already have. So here we have this fractal sum. We already have this kind of in, in place. So I'm going to use this guy. Now, a node that I love to use when it comes to roughness maps, if I hit the space bar, uh, you'll see that we have this uh, node here called histogram range. This is really good for quickly building up a roughness map. So I'm going to take this, this value that we have, and I'm just going to plug that right into the histogram range. Now you'll notice that it kind of changes values a bit. So this is the histogram range. If I double click the input, this shows me the raw input coming in. And that's because of this range setting. So if I set the range all the way to one, you'll notice that, okay, the result is now the exactly the same as the input coming in. However, now I can use this position value to kind of uh, move through these ranges. So you can see that this position becomes a really good way to create an interactive control for roughness. In my case, though, I want to use a pretty rough value, so I'm going to keep this around maybe 0.83 or so. But if we zoom in, we get just some subtle differences. Uh, so this is going to be better than just using just a flat-out uniform color value. And this is simply just going to become my roughness. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just keep this uh, map or this node here because this becomes my map extraction here. So I'll just select these nodes. I'm going to frame them, and I'll just call this uh, map extraction again that's my normal my roughness and so on all right so let's come back over here to our base color now let's enable our roughness input and let's take the result of this histogram range and just plug this guy in so the difference here you can see subtle if anything it's hard to tell but like i said it's just a slight uh change and if i want i can start to you know change the value so if i drop this down a bit here let's make this even more now, if I zoom in kind of close, we, we are getting some uh, a little bit more smoothness here, but you can see it's still broken up a bit by uh, that input being a fractal noise. So I'm going to set it uh, here. Let's, do, let's just do a nice number of 0.75. So that's going to take care of uh, what we have so far with this base material. Now, one of the other things that I want to start to kind of build into this tile effect, right now we have just all the tiles are basically the same. I'd like to take, you know, this these two rows of um, tiles. Let's see, it'll be th these two rows, and then we'll skip, and then we'll go to the next two rows. I'd like to be able to uh, have those. First off, when we actually create the MDL, those are going to have a clear coat layer. But I'd also like to have them have, you know, a little bit of a change in value because of that clear coat layer. Uh, it's going to basically kind of saturate the color value or or darken it basically. So. What we're going to do now is create that effect, and we're going to have to drop all the way back here to our tile sampler to do this. I'm going to use the tile sampler's ability to have some of these parameters be driven by input maps. So for instance, here you'll see we have a color map input. So I'm going to start here with a shape node. So we'll create a shape node here. 
Uh, we're going to leave this a square, but I'm going to change the tiling to 2. And then here on the Y, I'm just going to start to decrease this value. So here you can see that now I, I am actually creating a mask, which is going to uh, mask out or, or represent these two rows of, uh, of the tiles and so on. And here you can see these two rows as well. All right, so we'll probably have to tweak this again, but let's just integrate it here to our tile sampler so we can really see what's happening. So I'm going to take this and plug it right here into this color map input. So now we'll double click our tile sampler and we'll scroll down and we'll come over here to uh, our color map. We have this color mode here and for the multiplier, if I start to just increase this value here, let's just take it to around 0.5. Uh, you can see what it's doing here is it's uh, basically colorizing this brick. Now since it's tiling, if I kind of zoom out and I'll hit spacebar in my 2D view, now you can see, like I said, we're getting uh, you know two rows, uh, two rows which are going to be uh, non-glossy or no clear coat, and then two rows that have the clear coat and so on. And it's just going to repeat like this. So this is what we want to create. You can also notice that it's kind of messed up what we have going on here within uh, with the rest of our graph. You can see what's happening here. So what we're going to do uh, is, since we've created uh, this kind of value range here, we can then just simply come over here, create a levels, and I'll pipe this through the levels. And then what I can do is I'm just going to take this input black and just move this all the way up to the white. Now, just like that, I'm able to create a mask. So we're going to use this guy a bit later uh, as our mask. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to grab a levels, and uh, we'll take the output of our tile sampler in, and now we'll take our input white and just drag it all the way back, and you can see that now we get back to that original state uh, that we need here. So with this, I'm going to take the output of this levels and then plug that into the blur, and now we, we get our original result back. So everything's good to go again. All right, so we want to, you know, kind of darken some of the, the tiles or the tiles that are going to uh, have this uh, clear coat layer to them. So to do that, we're going to come all the way back over to our color, and I'm going to create a uh, hue saturation node here. And then I'm just going to take the lightness parameter and just drop it a bit, something like this. So now we get kind of this result here. And then what I can do is just blend these two guys together. So we'll do a blend here. So let's put uh, the HSL in the foreground and our original result here in the background. And then, like I said, we're going to use this uh, mask here. So let's take the output of that levels and put it into the opacity. And so now when I bring this in, you can see the effect that we're getting. Now, I do have a problem here. If I zoom in, you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of this hard edge. And that's because of where I'm actually generating this mask from. So you'll see that I'm generating it right based off uh, that original uh, shape before we actually started to create our rounded edges. So we need to just kind of reconfigure our nodes here a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just simply copy that blur and that levels that we have. So I'll just copy and paste them. And uh, then we're going to take this levels and feed that into the blur. So now uh, we get these rounded edges like this. OK, so here we have these nodes like this. And we'll just uh, bring these guys over. And then this output of this levels is going to be placed in the opacity of uh, that blend node. So now if we look at the blend, you can see that that kind of line is gone there. So now we have this kind of variation in this color. And now we'll take the output of that blend and place it here into uh, the uh, base color here for our base material. And then here in our 3D view, we can start to see the result uh, of what we have thus far. OK, so uh, here we'll take these nodes, uh, just kind of clean things up a little bit. Uh, again, I'm just going to reorganize this connection line. So we'll do something like that so it's just nice and readable. So here at this stage, uh, all these nodes here, this basically is going to create uh, the tile material that we have. Now the next material that we want to do is we want to start to add some grout here uh, into the area where we have these kind of grout lines. So here I'm just going to select this group of nodes just for organizational sake. And uh, we're just going to call this color. And here we go. All right. So that's what we have so far. Now, like I said, the next stage here is uh, we're going to uh, add our grout lines. We're going to add our grout material. And so just as we did before, I like to always, again, start with a base material because we're going to use it for layering. And I'll just right click, drag and drop that into my 3D view. So it's definitely not a metal. So I'm going to switch this here to a dielectric and then just start with kind of a base roughness. All right, so let's start uh, creating this grout material. So we'll start to bring this guy over here. Uh, now, I think what I'm going to do is, again, just start to mess around with some more grunge maps. Uh, I could, again, if I really wanted to be super optimized with this, I could try to start borrow, borrowing them from way back here. Uh, but I may want to change some values. So here I'm just going to start to duplicate them. 
Uh, so let's do uh, a dirt one. And then uh, I'm also going to add a dirt three. So we'll do a search, we'll add a dirt three. So we have these two guys together. Um, and then I'm gonna end up blending these guys. Uh, so here, let's do like levels and uh, just process some of these ranges just as we kind of did earlier. Uh, so let me do something more like kind of this. Just gives a bit of a kind of a scattered look. Uh, then I am going to uh, blend these two guys together. So foreground, background, and then for the blending mode, we'll set this to max lighten. And here I can start to, uh, actually I wanted to come into Dirt 3 as well and, and process this with some levels. So let's do something like kind of like this. There we go, perfect. So here you can see we get a little bit of clustering uh, from Dirt 1 uh, with that levels kind of in this area and so on. Just a little bit of uh, kind of variation, like I said. All right, so now, uh, of course, we're going to create a normal here. And uh, then for our base material, so we can visualize this, let's uh, enable our normal channel and plug this guy into here. So right off the bat here in our 3D view, uh, we can start to see what some of this grout looks like. Uh, also, let's just switch this to maybe a value of 2. And now that I can kind of see things, uh, let's just start to play around with uh, maybe some of these, a uh, little bit of this gamma range into here. So maybe something more like that. Okay. All right, so next I'm going to work on, you know, my roughness and my color. Uh, in this particular case for the roughness, I I'm just going to leave it at this kind of default value. Uh, it's pretty high roughness already, so I'm not going to create a specific map for this guy. Um, for the color, what we're going to do here is, again, we'll set a uniform color in case we want to be able to change this. So I'm just going to kind of set a value, maybe something like, like this here. And uh, let's see here uh, what we're going to do here. I could actually just expose this color value here uh, on the base color. But what I want to do is kind of maybe multiply some ambient occlusion into this. Now, uh, that's, you know, not really uh, PBR correct, uh, but it's OK to kind of cheat a little bit in this case. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is create an ambient occlusion node. And we'll take this blend. I'm just going to plug it into here. Uh, it's going to be a really intense value, so let's just drop this height depth down quite a bit. So we'll do something like maybe this here. Uh, I could also adjust my radius. Uh, I don't think it's really going to help me in this particular case. So um, here, we'll then uh, create a gradient map because I need to convert this to color. Up, oh, can't make the connection here in this case, so I'm going to hit 1 on the keyboard again to take me out of that compact material mode and place it into standard. Now I can make that connection. Here, I will create a blend, and we're just going to blend these two guys together here. So here, we'll uh, put uh, the gradient map in the foreground, and then we'll take our color node here and place that into the background, and then I'm just going to simply multiply this down and then drop the opacity here. So just it's a slight, slight effect. Okay, so here's my base color. I'm going to just create a user-defined map input and then plug the color into that. So now I have this color, and you can see that that little bit of ambient inclusion just, just gives it that little bit of extra kick. Um, since I'm using a path trace renderer, we're not going to have an ambient inclusion map itself, so that's why I'm kind of cheating it a little bit in this case. Um, okay, so that's going to take care of uh, kind of this grout material. So now it's time to go into the process of blending the two materials together. And that's why, like I said before, I always try to work with this base material because within a single graph, when it comes time to blend certain things like one material being a grout or maybe it's a dirt or a rust or something, um, I can then just easily kind of work uh, very granular with you know node by node, atomic, all the way up to uh, a full material, which is what we have here. Just drag and drop it into the 3D view. Uh, again, we have our grout drag and drop it in the 3D view. Here's our two materials. And now we can just simply blend these guys together. So here, I'm going to use a uh, material. So if I do a search for material, we have a material blend node. I'm going to use this guy. So first thing I need to do is go into my channels and disable the channels I'm not going to be using. So I'm going to uh, disable my diffuse channel here, uh, base colors on, normal. We don't need specular. We don't need gloss. We don't need metallic. And um, I'm not really sure what to do about height yet. Maybe I'll make that as a separate output. So for now, I'm just going to uh, just turn this off for now. Um, like I said, we'll maybe make that as a separate output later. So we just have these three uh, maps that we're blending with. OK, so now we have basically a, uh, a, a foreground, which is material one, and a um, 
I'm sorry, we could say like a background or like a base material, which is material one, and then material two is you know what we're layering on top of that. So in my case, what I'm going to do uh, is just kind of start. This is probably in terms of creating tiles, it really isn't going to work this way because the tiles would be first. But I'm just going to take the uh, the tile and place that into material one. And then I'm going to take my tiles here and place that into material two. So now if I just drag this into my 3D view, you can see that, well, material two is obviously overriding everything. So now I just simply need a mask here uh, to denote where the blending of these two materials are going to be. And I already have that in place. So if I go all the way back here to where I have this, let's see here, this levels here, this is going to be perfect mass for me. So these white areas are going to indicate where the tiles are. Now, if I were to kind of swap uh, these two materials and I invert this mask, I could have basically a grout mask. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do is take, uh, this levels here and this is going to be our mask. So I'm just going to drag a connection line all the way off this guy and plug it here into, uh, the input for, uh, this material blend. And then again, so I can really see this clearly, this connection, we're just going to drag out, uh, or reorganize here that connection line. So we can just you know, really get a good visual sense of where these uh, connections are taking place. So now this here, we'll select these guys and we will just frame this up and this will be our grout. Okay, so here's our materials. Uh, if we wanted to get, uh, you know, really organized with it here, we can then, you know, select all these guys and we'll frame that. And this here is going to be the tiles. Okay, so uh, here's how the graph looks at this stage, and here in the 3D view, we can start to see uh, the effect. We've got our tiles, and we now have our grout. Now, if I wanted to change the scale on some of this grout, I can actually do that now. Uh, if I'm since I'm in Designer 2017.2, uh, all of the uh, the noises have this scale parameter. So maybe what I'll experiment with here is just changing uh, the scale. So if we do this times two here, you can see it just gives uh, you know a smaller effect here of this grout, and I think that's what I want to do. So essentially, I'm just kind of tiling that noise. Um, okay, so now we have uh, this in place and everything's working. One other thing that I think I want to do with this, though, is like I said, we're not going to be using a specific ambient occlusion map. So I think I want to kind of do an effect where I kind of cheat this because right now, um, you know, I'd like to have just maybe a little bit of occlusion uh, just to kind of, um, you know, further meld or blend uh, these two types of materials together here. Um, so I'm going to experiment with something here with that. So let's take a look at uh, creating an ambient occlusion node again. And uh, we need our height map. So uh, maybe what I could use is this guy here, the one that's with the, the blend. So let's uh, plug this here into our ambient occlusion. Uh, let's see. Nope, let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's just use this levels again here. So plug this guy into here. And I'm just going to adjust my height depth. So I lower the height depth. I may even adjust my radius a bit here. Uh, it's not really having a whole lot of effect in this particular case. But now you can see with this kind of dark edge, uh, this kind of helps just give this a bit more of a 3D look to this guy. So I think what I want to do in the end, let me just drag this guy over to here. And here you can see that if I hit one on the keyboard, this expands my channel. So this is good. Let's, let's create our outputs first. So a quick way to do that, I can just right click here. And if I come over to this create option, I can say output nodes. So I'm going to create output nodes. This is actually me. This is asking me if I want to create nodes for the hidden connectors. Now in the material blend, as we did earlier, we turned off some channels like diffuse specular, a bunch of channels we're not using. Those are hidden. So we don't want those. So I'm just going to say, uh, no, don't create those. And now this creates my three outputs here. So this is now my base color with these two guys together. So what I'm going to do is uh, just simply take a blend here. Uh, again, I have to, since it's color, we got to change this here into a gradient. Uh, so hit one on the keyboard so I can make the connection. Uh, then I'm going to uh, just place that gradient map into here. All right, so what I'm going to do is just hit one on the keyboard, grab my base color, plug that into the background. Uh, then I'll come over to my blending mode and hit multiply. And so now you can see we start to get some of that ambient occlusion into there as well. And then I'm just going to kind of drop it back here with my opacity. So it just gives it a little bit of a 3D look to this. And then we'll use our blend and we'll place that into the base color. All right, so now what I want to do, I'm not seeing the result of my maps because uh, at this stage right now, we've been taking this base material 
Here, I'm going to hit 3 on the keyboard just to collapse everything. We've been taking this base material, dragging and dropping that into the 3D view. Now we need to actually view our outputs. So here, I'll just right click in the graph and choose View Outputs in 3D View. So now you can see that uh, that ambient occlusion just kind of um, helps to further kind of just blend these two. Uh, the grout gives a little bit more weight between the grout here and the tile itself. So this is going to become our, our finished graph. This is everything that we did to create uh, this material. If I double click to go out to the root level of my graph, at this stage we have a color setting so far that allows us to change the color uh, for the tile. So let's just call this... Um, here, let's actually come in and change this label now to Tile Color. Uh, we could also come over here to our Grout, and uh, we will expose this. So this one will be uh, Grout underscore Color. This is the identifier name. I usually use this kind of uh, notation. Uh, then we'll double click empty area to go to the root and then here for the user friendly label uh, We're then going to call this a grout color So if I just click this little preview button here You can see these this is going to be the two controls that are going to be visible to me once we start to create the MDL now since I'm going to be instancing this substance graph into an MDL graph I'm going to create myself a few other outputs that I can use so number one uh, we're going to need this mask here so I'm going to create an output here, and I'm going to plug this mask right into this output. Now let's just drag this guy here. Let's grab him and just drag him over here with, uh, along with the other outputs. And for the usage, I'm not going to place anything. I don't even need it because this is going to be like my own user-defined uh, output. Now I will set an identifier because if I don't, it's just going to every time I create an output, it's going to append an underscore number behind it. So I don't like that. So for this, uh, I'm going to call this. Um, the identifier, I'll just call this uh, clear underscore coat mask. So underscore coat underscore mask. And then the label, this will be clear coat mask. Okay, so we have that. Now uh, we're going to need another output here, and we're going to need our grout. Now I can just borrow that here from uh, this grayscale mask. So we're going to use this guy. So I'll hold down the control key just to pull off a connection line and then plug that right into this output here uh, leave the usage blank uh, this here I'll call it uh, grout mask and for the identifier we'll call it grout underscore mask so now I've got, I have these uh, outputs here and if we look at it over here in uh, the actual substance graph we've got base color normal rough clear coat and grout mask so that's what these guys are so now we have uh, the full substance completed, and now we're going to jump over into uh, creating an MDL graph, and we're going to use this substance as an input for our MDL nodes. So now we're going to create an MDL graph. So here in my package, I'll right-click and choose New, and here I'll choose MDL Material. For the template, I'm just going to choose Empty, and here we'll just name this Tiles underscore Tutorial underscore MDL. And then we'll click OK, and the MDL material is created for us. So we're going to do uh, just a little bit of setup here. So for the surface material, I'm just going to drag out on this uh, output here. And I want to make sure that I create a material surface BSDF. So we'll create this guy here. I'm also going to come over here to my package and take my tiles tutorial. I can left click and drag and drop this graph here into uh, the MDL graph. So here I have my original outputs. So just to kind of set this up quickly, uh, what we're going to do here for the scattering, so I'm just going to uh, pull out a connection line here and I'm going to create a Fresnel layer. Uh, then we're going to have two layers here. Let's see. Actually, I'm sorry. We're going to have the uh, base BSDF. We'll drag this out. For now, what I'm going to do is create a diffuse reflection here. So now we're starting to see something here in the 3D view. And for the layer, we'll drag out a connection line here. And in the search, I'll type GGX. And I'm going to choose GGX Smith. So uh, here we'll pull this connection out. And uh, for now, what we want to do is uh, here for the color, let's see here, um, here for the IOR to start, let me create a float. And I'm going to set the value here to 1.5. And we'll take the output here and plug this into the IOR. And here for the roughness, what we're going to do is uh, just pull out a connection line and I am going to start to type uh, multiply for the multiple 
multiplication operator, what we need to do here for uh, GGX is we need to square our roughness. Now just to start, what I'm going to do is just quickly create a float, and I'll just plug this in uh, like so. And then we can just kind of uh, use this to drive our roughness. Now here for our tent color, uh, we'll just create a color. And if I just set this as a color, so now we start to uh, get just a basic material just really fast. Um, okay, so this is what we're going to uh, start uh, with here. And so we've got this Fresnel layer, and this section right here is going to end up uh, becoming our clear coat layer. So one other thing that I want to do here is for the geometry uh, here on the material, I'm going to pull out a connection line from here, and I'm going to choose material ge geometry with the uh, float 3. And uh, then this here, as you'll see, gives me displacement and normal. So I'm going to use the normal map here from my substance. So let me just uh, pull this window down a little bit so we can get some room here in our graph. And we'll, here we'll just make a little bit of room over here. And so here I have my normal. Let's just plug this here into the normal. And now we're starting to see uh, here our value. Uh, then the next thing I want to do here is just replace this tent color with the actual color from our substance. So we'll plug this guy into here. And I'll just delete that color node. So now you can see that, uh, okay, we're starting to get something here. We're starting to build up our MDL. And again, we're just using uh, this substance that we created in the first part of this tutorial. Now, before we move uh, any further, uh, there's a few tweaks I want to make here. Because you can see we're starting to get some weird kind of color uh, artifacting here on the edges. So what I'm going to do is jump back over here to uh, my tiles uh, tutorial. See, it's actually here in this tab. So I'll just click here. And if I zoom in, uh, you can see that what I've done, if I look at my blend, and then here we have this HSL node. Uh, what I want to do is um, I don't want to use the HS, HSL uh, after this blend where I'm adding this kind of edge effect here to these bricks. So I'm going to come back to the previous blend where we just have our color value here. And I'm going to take the output of that and plug that into the HSL. So now you can see here, this is actually updating. The renderer is updating. Uh, we're on iRay. Uh, even though we're in our tutorials graph, uh, it's still updating here from the material that we have in our MDL. So now we have just like a slight change here. Uh, so I want to make that change. Uh, another thing that I think I want to do, let me just come back to where I have, okay, these little black dots. And I'm just going to lower this value down a bit. Okay, um, so another thing that I want to do while I'm actually here is I forgot to add an output uh, for my height. So I'm going to hit my space bar, create an, uh, an output here. Uh, this one actually could just use a, a usage of height. So I'm just going to just copy the height, put it into the identifier and the label. And for this height image here, let's see, uh, I think I'll just use uh, this output. So let's just make this connection here. Uh, and then I'm just going to move this output over here uh, with his other output friends. OK, so we have that in place. Let's just save what we have so far. I think that's all the changes I wanted to make. Uh, let's jump back over here to our tile. And then uh, here you'll notice that it, it did update. I have my height output here. Um, OK, so um, here's what we're getting. And uh, here for uh, this roughness, you can see that I can actually set this to be a pretty low value, which is what I want to do. Uh, I think what I'm using here is this Studio 02 HDR. So now I'll just expand this window just a little bit more. And I can hold down Shift and Control and right mouse button to kind of rotate my light around. Let's see here. So I'm just going to kind of just try to angle this guy up a little bit. So now you can start to see some of this kind of clear coat uh, layer here. Um, so here, if I go back to my substance, if I select this here in the properties, you can see that I have my uh, base parameters and the resolution is pretty low. So I'm going to just uh, dial this guy back up to a 2K resolution. And now we're starting to get some actual detail into here. And if I want, I can even come into here and I can tile this. So let's say we set this at maybe 1.4. Uh, so we start to get some tiles here. So now, like I said, what we're doing is we're trying to, uh, you know, use the MDL graph to add some extra functionality uh, to the shading of our material. So, for example, what we want to do is we want to add this clear coat layer, and uh, that's going to be for these bricks here in this section. And then these uh, kind of tiles that we have here, I'd like these to have, well, they're not going to have hardly any gloss to them, but they're also going to be uh, a little translucent as well. 
So we're going to play a, a bit with the volume option here within the MDL material. All right, so the next thing that I think I want to do is I want to use uh, my height for displacement. Uh, so here I can come over to that height output on the substance, and we'll just uh, connect that here to displacement. And then if we come over here to scene, edit, uh, you'll notice here that you have this mesh display component. And by default, it's going to be set to none. So we want to make sure here that we set this to parametric, uh, or you could use length as well, and just set uh, a value here so that we can start to tessellate uh, this geometry. All right, so I didn't actually see any displacement. So I need to right click and choose view in 3D view. So now I can see my displacement. So it's pretty intense here with this value. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just jump back over here to my tiles tutorial. And here is where I have this height. I'm gonna select this connection line and uh, then I'm going to create just a histogram range node into here. Uh, let's see, let's grab where, where that guy is here. Okay, he was... Let's just drag him close over to uh, this region. Now for the range, I'm just going to set this uh, up uh, all the way up here to 1. Uh, and now I have this position value here that I can start to change. So I'm going to uh, expose this value. Um, I actually don't want to drive it uh, above 0.5. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just expose this value and I'll uh, create a new user input for this. And let's just call this... Um, height underscore value in this case. So we'll click OK and OK. So we'll double click to get to the root level of our graph. And now we have this position value here. We want to change this to uh, height range. And I'm going to say, I guess, minimum. Uh, and then the maximum we will say uh, 0 0.5. So we'll just kind of clamp that. OK, um, so now we have that set. Uh, let's jump back over here to our MDL graph. Right click, view in 3D view so we can see this. And uh, let's see here, let's uh, double click so we can see our height value. Our height range is set to zero. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just give this a little bit of a height range. And now you can see that I can interactively adjust uh, this height value here to uh, these tiles. So I'm gonna try just set it to maybe a value of uh, 0.15. Okay, so um, here's what we have at this stage. Okay, so like I said, this this layer here uh, is going to end up, uh, this is going to become our clear coat. So I'm going to select this here, and we will frame this group of nodes, and we will call this uh, clear coat. Okay, so we'll leave it like this for now. Move these guys over to here. Uh, okay, so the next thing that uh, I'm going to do is uh, start to work uh, on the tiles that are not uh, going to have this clear coat. Uh, so again, we're going to create ourselves a Fresnel layer. So we'll put this guy here. And uh, then for the base, uh, BSDF, I'm going to pull out a connection line. Now, in this, for right now, what I'm going to do is just set this to diffuse reflection, just so we can see what we're working with here. We're going to change that a little bit later. Uh, also, let's just grab our substance. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Okay, so let's go back here to the layer. We'll drag this connection line off, uh, start to type GGX. We're going to use GGX Smith. Uh, let's see, let's also do a multiplication operator here, and we'll plug this into the uh, UNV, because again, we need to square that roughness. Now, in this case, this is going to use uh, the roughness that we created from our substance. So here's that roughness output. Uh, we can uh, just uh, go ahead and just connect this right into uh, this multiply operator here. And then for the tint color, we're going to use the base color uh, once again from our substance. Uh, okay, so it looks like I think I have this guy set up. Actually, we need to uh, set our IOR as well. So here I'll create a float. And for this float value, we're going to set this to be 1.5. And then we'll just plug this, whoops, and we'll just plug this here into our color. All right, so now we have that set. Now to blend these uh, to blend these two layers, these Fresnel layers together, what we need to do is use a uh, weighted layer. So I'll start to uh, type weighted. You can see here it gets filtered. This is it, weighted layer, the float BSDF, um, BSDF and float three as input. So we'll select this guy here, and you can see it takes a layer and a base, uh, both of them being BSDFs. Now, here at the top, you can see we have this float parameter. If I come all the way over here, we have a plus, and then we have this little eye icon. If I click this eye icon button here, you can see that it just gives me a nice uh, float uh, input value that I can use. And I can actually plug a mask into that, which is precisely what we created.
So we're gonna take this first group of nodes that we have here and we'll place that into the base. And then we're gonna take our clear coat here and put that into the layer. So now we have this set up. Uh, let's also come into here. We want to use um, our clear coat mask. So if I double click the output, you can see this is what it is. So we're gonna use this clear coat mask. Let's make a little room here. Uh, it's this guy here, and we're going to plug that into that weight input. Okay, so now that we have this weighted layer uh, in use, uh, we can now just pipe that straight into our material surface. So I'll just make that connection. And here you can see that now uh, we have the clear coat is on the specific bricks that we want them to be on. We can also come back over here to where our clear coat is, and we can start to change this IOR value. So maybe I'll change that to like 1.3. So now we get something more like that. All right, so that's looking pretty good so far. Uh, let's just go in and save this guy here. So now I'm just trying to clean things up a little bit. Uh, let me just rearrange some of these nodes. So we can kind of see what's going on here. Move these guys out of the way. All right. So now another thing that I'm going to want to do is create a layer that's going to be uh, specific here to uh, this grout. Uh, because uh, when we start to introduce this kind of translucent effect to these tiles here, we don't want that to actually affect the tiles itself. So um, what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to select uh, this, these, note, these group of notes here because we're going to use this similar setup here. So let's just save time, copy, and paste these guys, and then we're just going to move them up. Uh, kind of over into this area here. So we'll move this up. Uh, again, I'm just going to reroute my connection line here just uh, so everything's uh, nice and readable. And uh, here for uh, this, this value, I could do one of two things. I could uh, just grab the roughness map that I've been using. Uh, again, if we take a look at it, uh, it looks like this. It's our roughness output. You can see that it does have some roughness value for this um, grout area. But you know what? I think what I'll do is I'm just going to come into the float value and just give it a pretty high high uh, value here. For the IOR, we're going to set this back to 1.5. Then what we're going to do is uh, add ourselves another weighted layer here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and enable our float weight here. All right, so what we're going to do in this particular case, uh, and this is the, the structure in which we set which one is the base and which one the layer, really... It really depends on what our weight or our input float is going to be here for our weight. So in this case, I'm going to take the result of this weighted layer, which again is the combination of our clear coat uh, and then our non kind of clear coat tiles. Uh, then what I'm going to do is uh, just plug that into the layer. And then for the base, I'm going to use my uh, this new uh, Fresnel layer, which is going to represent my grout. So now I have my weighted area here. So let's uh, again go back and grab hold of the grout mask so it looks like this. Now if I, would, if I were to have inverted this mask so it's white right where the grout is going to be, uh, you could see how you could change the ordering here within that Fresnel layer. But you know it really doesn't matter. It's just however uh, you need to do it. In this particular case, I didn't need to invert uh, the mask to do it like this. So it's just, it's, it just doesn't really matter. All right, so let's take the result of this mask here and plug it into that weight value. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll take the output of this weighted layer and plug that finally into our material surface. And uh, all should be working as expected. Uh, one way to kind of double check this here, if we take our uniform here, let's do uh, a color here. So if we grab our color and I'm just going to plug this in, you can see that uh, this color is indeed affecting only uh, the grout area. So I'm just going to undo this, and now we are good to go. So this section here, and we'll select those nodes and frame them, and here we are going to call this grout. So now we have that guy set up. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do uh, in this process, we could call it done from here if we wanted to. We've got our, our clear coat layer and so on. But the next thing that we want to do uh, in this particular case is uh, we want to start to create a little bit of uh, translucency here on uh, these specific tiles. And um, now that I'm kind of looking at this, another thing I could do on this clear coat layer, I see that it's still affecting kind of my normal in this. So I think one thing I might do 
uh, while we're here, uh, let's just, uh, here, let me save this, make sure everything's saved. Jump back over to our tiles tutorial graph. Uh, let's go back over here to we have our map. So here is where we have our map extraction where we combined our normal. And you can see that some of those um, those dot noises that we created, they're kind of showing up on some of the clear coat areas. And I don't think I actually want that. So here's where we have those dots. Uh, real quick, what I'm going to do is create another blend node, place the, the result of this blend here in my foreground. And then let's just grab uh, what we have here. This is our uh, our mask that we've been working with. Let's place that into the foreground, and then we will come into here and we will subtract. So now we'll just kind of clear that out of where this noise section is, and then we'll pull this uh, into our normal map that we create. Okay, so now once again, we'll save. Let's jump back over to our tutorial MDL, and let's just right click, view in 3D view just to make sure. Okay, and now you can see that that normal is no longer affecting that clear coat layer. I think that's going to be uh, more in line with what I want to do here. Um, okay, so like I said, now we can start to think about how we want to work with this uh, translucent area. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to need to create a volume. So right here on the material, you can see that we have this material volume input. So I'm just going to uh, left click and drag out a connection uh, line here. And then I'm going to choose this material volume, which takes a VDF and a color and a color as input. So now we have this material volume. Let's just kind of move some of this out of the way here. OK, so we're not going to worry about the scattering VDF. But what we are going to do is just cr create for us uh, an absorption and a scattering coefficient. So here, for the absorption, we can just left click and drag this out here. And I'll start to type in absorption. And you can see here that we have a node that's volume absorption. It takes a float and a color. So we'll, we'll uh, you know create this node. Now, let's do the same thing here for our scattering. So left click, drag and drop this out. And let's start to type scattering. And here we have volume scattering. So now, both of these two guys take a float. So we'll hit the space bar. And I will create a float. Now, this is going to be my scattering. So I want this to scatter quite a bit. So I'm going to just uh, set the value up pretty high, around 0.9 or so. And we'll plug this guy into here. Now, we'll select this node, copy, and paste it. And then we'll plug this into the absorption. And I'll set this quite low. OK. And so now we have this color. So we could just pull this guy out and choose a color. And let's just do something like maybe like a green or something, just so we can see the effect here. OK, so we have this set up. Uh, one other thing that I want to do, uh, let me grab another float here. Whoops, make sure I spell this right. Let's grab another float. And we're going to set this to uh, 1.5 for the IOR. And we want to plug this here into our material surface. So now we have this set. OK, so we have this volume set up, but you'll notice that, well, nothing's happening. Uh, and that is because uh, we need to set or change uh, this diffuse reflection BSDF. So I said earlier we, we are going to end up changing this. All right, so what we want to do, I'm going to pull off a connection line to here. And I'm going to start to type in specular. And what we want to use is a specular BSDF. So I'm going to put this guy here into place. And you can see, well, OK, this is really messing things up. Uh, just so I don't have to move and pan all over the place, what I can do is just hold down the control key and left click on this output. And that's going to just borrow out this connection line. And then I can just reconnect it into here. And then just uh, left click, at, uh, I'm sorry, right, left or right click out here in an empty space just to get rid of that. So like I said, we no longer need this guy. So we're going to delete it. Now here on this specular BSDF for the mode, we need to change this from scatter reflect to scatter transmit. So I'm going to uh, change this. And when I do, now we can start to see the result of this scattering here. And like I said, we change this to a green so we can instantly see what this is doing. So instead of this being a green, uh, what I could well, I could tint it any color I want. But here, I'm just going to borrow this out, this color coming from my actual substance. So the substance is actually driving this. So we'll change uh, this color value here. And uh, then we're just kind of letting iRay kind of update for us. and here's what we're getting. So now I'm going to group uh, these nodes. So we'll select these guys here. And uh, then I'm going to uh, just click this frame button. And this is going to be uh, tiles uh, translucent. And you can see that everything's being masked correctly here. 
And of course, I could go and change my absorption and scatter value scatter values if I like. So for example, if we uh, absorb the rays more, you can see that uh, the result that's going to get here as soon as things start to update. And so now you can see that uh, the rays are being absorbed a little bit more, a little darker. So like I said, I want to keep this to be a fairly low value. So we'll do something like this here. Okay, so here's the final render that I have. Uh, made a few changes. So for example, a uh, little post effects, added some depth of field, uh, did a little color correction and so on. And so like I said, this is the final render that I have. Uh, I also did uh, a few changes to the tutorial graph, which I'll just uh, talk about right now. So for one, uh, you'll notice that I uh, went back and added this clear coat roughness. It's uh, uh, very, very light, uh, but it just kind of breaks up uh, the overall kind of gloss on that clear coat. Uh, so just real quick, let me jump over here to this uh, tiles tutorial and uh, let me just show you what I did. So here you can see, um, like I said, I created an output here for uh, just using a couple grunge maps uh, that you see random through my histogram range, expose this value so that I could have uh, a bit of a roughness on that clear coat. Uh, one other change uh, that I made up here, uh, just made a small tweak here to uh, my saturation value. Uh, I did uh, add another blend on top. So here with that HSL value, what I ended up doing was uh, taking uh, this kind of edge mat and then I did add that back over top of the HSL. So this is the final result. Uh, again, I just wanted to add a little bit of variance into here. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just one small tweak, uh, just coming back over here where I had this fractal sum, I just made some adjustments here just to bring out uh, a little bit more variation in this noise. Uh, and here you can see that within that uh, final result uh, or final composite result of my base color. So you, you can see uh, a bit more kind of darker values in here. So that's it. This is going to conclude this tutorial. I hope you found uh, this video useful and I wish you the best of luck on the contest. Thank you very much for participating.